Hey everybody, I'm Tommy. Today I'm gonna to show you how I built this testing device and tested whether or not adding super glue to wooden threads would increase their strength. Whether it's your first time here, or even if you've been here before, welcome to One Minute Workbench. Several people have commented on how I often make use of wooden threads in my videos and have suggested that I could improve the strength of those threads by soaking them in super glue. I found the idea fascinating and decided to build this thing and put that theory to the test. Since I often tap threads in Baltic birch plywood, I figured I'd use it to make my test samples. I made a set of samples out of half inch material and even though I didn't record it, I also made another set of samples out of quarter inch material. This is because I wasn't sure which thickness would work best with my testing equipment. I'll come back to this idea a little later on in this video. The samples are basically little rectangles with a quarter inch hole drilled in the middle. The hole is then tapped with a 5 16 18 thread. I made 20 samples in each thickness and then added super glue to 10 from each set. To add the super glue, I just did my best to make sure the threads were completely soaked and then set the samples on some wax paper so they wouldn't stick to the top of my workbench. After they had dried for about 30 minutes, I did a second application, again making sure to thoroughly soak the threads. I then let the threads cure for a full 24 hours. And as I mentioned before, even though I didn't record it, I did the same exact thing for another set that was made from quarter inch material. To build the frame of the testing device, I milled two pieces of scrap lumber to make sure they were perfectly square. This will just ensure that the device helps to line things up as perfectly as possible so the forces can be applied as directly as possible. I finished squaring up the pieces on the table saw and then cut one of them in half. I secured the two halves to my workbench using clamps. The bottom clamps are just out of frame, but I used three clamps total per side and really, really tightened them down good. In the third piece of wood, I drilled a counter bore and a through hole that was just ever so slightly bigger than 5 16 After taking some measurements, I positioned the third piece horizontally and secured it in place using several 3 inch screws near each end. I added a 5 16 18 bolt and a fender washer to the through hole and to keep it from falling out, I secured it in place with a hex nut. I then added a sample piece to the bolt to help me get an idea of the remaining structures that needed to be built around it. I noticed the washer was wider than the board, so I filed it down until it was flush. I then fashioned this upward force component that is designed to apply equal force on either side of the sample. Because it's very important that the force is applied as evenly and directly as possible, I added guides to either side of the upward force component and then added this constraining component to reduce the chances of it flaring outward. I then did the same exact thing on the other side. This keeps the component very tightly constrained, but still allows it to move freely in the necessary direction. I made a small stand that works to hold my phone in position so it can be used to record the scales readout. With the testing device built, I decided to give it a try. That's when I noticed nothing. I then realized my jack was broken, so I ran to the store and got another one. 
Off camera, I did a couple quick tests and realized that the half inch material was too strong for my scale, so I switched to using the quarter inch material. In order to use quarter inch material though, I had to use a half inch backer to keep the quarter inch material from cracking in half. To do this, I just drilled out the threads from one of the half inch pieces and slipped it over the bolt. Then I threaded my quarter inch piece onto the bolt. Again, the thicker piece just supports the thinner piece so we can test the strength of the threads. Without it there, the ends of the thinner piece would just bend upward and the piece would likely break in two. For this preliminary test, I zeroed out the scale and then started applying force with a jack. With the scale zeroed out, the readout stopped showing the force at about 250 pounds. The threads in the thin piece were able to withstand almost one more full swing of the lever before it broke. This meant that even the thinner material was too strong for my scale. So I went out and got the highest capacity scale I could find, which happened to be this 440 pound scale. With the new scale, I was finally able to see the breaking point for a preliminary sample piece. To my surprise, the sample reached 372 pounds before it broke. I felt like I finally had a good system going and decided to officially start testing my sample pieces. I labeled 10 pieces of quarter inch material that all had plain wooden threads and then started my test. The first piece tested reached 420 pounds and maybe even a little more. The scale is a little finicky and if pressure isn't increasing, like when the jack lever is traveling upwards, the screen sometimes turns off or pauses on a specific number. On this third sample, you can see that the scale stopped increasing at 379 pounds. Again, the scale can be a little finicky. Fortunately, I didn't have any issues while testing the remaining samples. Someone had mentioned in a video comment that I'd probably need to re-thread the holes after doing a couple applications of super glue, and they were 100% right. I couldn't even get the bolt started, so I just passed the tap through all the samples one more time so that the bolt would easily thread into the holes. I didn't get a good readout on the first super glue sample I tested because the screen went out, but the scale was already over 400 pounds before the screen quit, and I still applied a significant amount of pressure with the lever before the threads popped. My guess is that it exceeded the scale's capacity. On this second sample, you can clearly see that it exceeds the scale's capacity. The third sample also exceeded the scale's upper limit, so I decided to change things up for the rest of the tests. Since the new scale was the largest capacity I could find, I decided to use both scales to test the remaining seven samples. Off camera, through a little trial and error, I found a suitable position where the weight could be shared evenly enough that neither scale would reach its capacity before the other one. This increased the capacity I was able to detect to about 710 pounds. To take the readings, I just watched the video in slow motion and added the two numbers together.
After testing the quarter inch samples, I decided to test one of the half inch samples just for fun. As you can see, even though it exceeded the capacity of both scales, I still had to apply a lot of force in order to get it to break. My guess would be that it was in excess of a thousand pounds. Here are the final numbers from all the tests. And here are the averages for each sample group. While this is a pretty small sample group, the results suggest that superglue tends to make the thread significantly stronger. Hey, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to everyone who made these suggestions and helped to inspire this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, and make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time there's a new episode. I'd love to hear what you think of this testing device and these tests in the comments section below. And if you have any quick questions you want answered, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And until the next time I see you, I hope you have fun building something.